are not such that I would enter or infer from them that God is good, gracious, and merciful necessarily. To have one husband murdered and to see the other, other one's body, soul, and spirit disintegrate through cancer is not what we call proof of the love of God. In fact, there are many times when I, it looks like the opposite. But here's what she said. But my belief that the love of God is not inferred by, it, it, it is not by inference nor instinct. My belief in the love of God is by faith. To apprehend God's sovereignty working in that love is, we must say it, the last and highest victory of faith that overcomes the world. James would say amen to that. When trials come, and they're, they're going to come. Trials will come. There is something that we can't know, and there's something that we can know. We don't, we can't always know why things happen the way they go. We can't always know it. No matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we try to work it out and figure it out, there's always going to be many mysteries in life. <clears throat> But there'll be questions you'll have maybe never, even in portals of glory, will never be answered. Because they, the idea is that if the purpose was accomplished, the answer why is exactly that. The purpose was accomplished because it, it established strength in your faith. Amen? The greater the tragedy, the greater the mystery. I'm going to say that again. The greater the tragedy, the greater the trouble, the greater the struggle, the greater the mystery. Some will seem obvious. Maybe you made a bad, a bad decision. You bought something you couldn't afford. Now, you, now you've got a big burden on you that's weighing heavy day in and day out. They say, well, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Or, but there are things that are gonna, you're going to make decisions, and you're going to say, well, I wish we hadn't done that, but we did. Or maybe a decision was made for you, and you still don't know why. So as we go through life, we can look back and see many blanks that we wish that God would fill in for us. Most of the time, we will carry those unfilled blanks to us all the way to heaven. And even in heaven, they may remain blank. You see, when hard times come, we can know. Wait, I should back up. For you know, when hard times come, we can know that God is at work in our trials. And our trials are for our benefit. Our trials are for our benefit and for his glory. Somebody say amen. amen. To say that is to say nothing more than the words of Romans 8, 28. Here it is. For the children of God, this is, this is for you. All things do indeed work together for the good. Sometimes we'll see it. Often we will simply have to just take it by faith. But it is true, whether we believe it or not, all things work for the good. You see, the Christian way is not easy. This is, this is why I take issue with a lot of the prosperity preaching. Just come to Jesus and all your problems will be gone. Lies, lies, all lies. When I came to Jesus, I realized I got more problems than I could ever think of handling myself. Thank God that he's real. Amen? Amen. So let that sink in because I think some of us are still dealing with that right now. The Christian way is not easy. And any representation to the contrary of this, it's false. It's a deception. Paul said this, if anybody comes to you preaching another gospel, tell them to be a curse. It's not easy. But it's possible. All things are possible through God. Jesus says, without me you can do nothing, but with me all things are possible. There is an abundant life to be had. And there are spiritual victories that can be experienced. And there is joy in the Lord and the filling of the Spirit. But those things don't come in spite of our trials. They come with our trials. Most often they come through and with and alongside those trials. In various ways, we will struggle every day as we make certain earthly pilgrimages. As we're making our way through life. As we're going through this world. In a fallen world, there can be no other way. But for the most part, we can't choose our trials. We just have to be ready for them. But I'm going to say it again. You don't always get to pick your battles. We need to know how and when to pick them. 
But when trials come, you don't always get to pick them. You don't always get to choose them. Nor can we avoid most of them. But we can choose how we respond. How many of you have been blessed this morning? I mean, right now, say, you know what, Pastor? I need some of this right now. Can I take this with me? Yes, you can. It's free. <laughs> we can respond either with joy or bitterness. We can respond with forgiveness or anger. We can have trust or unbelief. Thought. We can have faith or fear. We can have love or hatred. We can have kindness or malice. Gentleness or stubbornness. <laughs> Mercy or revenge, peace or worry. And the last thing I have on my list is you can choose hope or despair. All I can say is this our perspective, the way we think, see things, makes all the difference. Let me give you this right now God does not intend to destroy us by the trials that He allows to come our way. Those things that seem so painful now will one day be clearly seen as benefits for our spiritual growth. You'll look back and say, you know what, I did. That was, that was a tough time. But here's, here's, I'm a better person or, or I've changed because of that situation. Every household in America today, we would open our eyes, we could say, yeah, we're going through some things right now. And I'm glad to know that God has a purpose because otherwise it would be absolutely unbearable. We should rejoice when we fall into these temptations, these trials of life. And we will rejoice if we believe that God has said every hard trial is another step on the stairway that leads from this life to the next. Sometimes you have to find yourself kneeling, maybe even crawling. I've been, in, I've been in this sanctuary on my face, crawling on the floor, not because I fell down, but because I laid down, because I said, Lord, I can't take this anymore. The weight was too much for me. But he's given us something. He's given us hope. And then the way he gives us hope is he said, I'm going to be here. I, listen, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will help you. I will help you. Though the days seem dark, though the trial seems unbearable, but I will help you. You will not go through the fire alone. 